Smith & Wesson may just drop me after I drop this video full of facts and tell you why I think the 5.7 will never compete or overtake the 9mm for self-defense, at least in the United States. I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of the 5.7, specifically the M&P 5.7, and then of course contrast with the 9mm and at the end tell you why I believe this just will never be that guy, right? It will never be that gun to overtake 9mm. And not just this gun, but all 5.7s, they just are not there and I don't believe they will ever be there. So they're not him as the kids would say. Now I'm going to use this as my full review on the m and 5.7. I've already done an unboxing. We talked about the tempo barrel. We broke it down, all of that good stuff. Let's walk around the gun here really quick. And then we will talk about some of the, the, the advantages of 5.7 first. So of course you have a threaded barrel. You have their new slide serrations, front and rear here. So as opposed to the fish scale style serrations, even more different than the, the serrations, the really uh, aggressive serrations they put on the equalizer, and obviously different than the fish scale style serrations they used for a long time. These are, are more aggressive than the fish scale style serrations, and they really give a nice bite on your hand whenever you go to charge up the gun. You can see you have anti-glare serrations up top. You have a three dot system there, right? So not too bad as far as your sights. Lightning cuts in the top of the slide there and a two piece tempo barrel. So this barrel is designed to aid in extraction and it's also designed to keep the gun as flat shooting as possible. I go more into this on the unboxing. And of course, in this video, I'll show you actually how it shoots. Full size pick tenny rail right here, rounded off trigger guard. You have their updated trigger in this gun. Check it out. Boom, brakes, reset, right there. Now, it does have an internal hammer, just like, actually, the equalizer, okay? And so you get a nice, clean, crisp trigger pull. And so what's cool is with, with this gas-operated system, basically, there is a port in the barrel, and so this will not cam open until the bullet has actually passed that port in the barrel. Okay, so a pretty neat design, uh, again, when it comes to the system. It, it's neat because we rarely ever see changes in, in these types of system, right? So it's kind of cool that they went with something different. You can see the standard M&P grip texturing right there. Optics ready, of course. Coming to the other side of the gun, of course your magazine release is reversible and it comes with two 22 round mags. Ooh. I'm a chance it. Oh! There you go. I clipped it. Very, very nice, dude. Get this thing zeroed out. Let's check the weight. One pound, 10 ounces. That, of course, is unloaded. 
If we compare that to the 13 round magazine that's in the equalizer, empty, right? One pound, eight ounces. So we'll keep that as a mental note for the future. And that leads me into my first pro on the 5.7 is when we get to the range and you see how flat shooting and the low recoil that the 5.7 actually offers. Right, and so when this was developed, right, in the 80s by FN, that was one of the requirements. It needed to be higher capacity, better terminal ballistics, and it just so happens that you can actually shoot this gun a little bit better as far as like your follow-up shots because there's not as much recoil. Another pro is the fact that you can get so many rounds into the magazines, right? They pretty much all of these guns have at least 20 rounds in your mag. So that bottleneck design, and of course the size of the casing being smaller than nine millimeter, you're able to get more rounds into the magazine. So capacity, flat shooting, great follow-up shots should lead to great shot placement as well. If you have somebody that's more timid around firearms, you wanna introduce a new shooter to this as a training tool, as a self-defense round, you know? It's, it's generally got a pretty fast FPS, although there's some nine millimeter loads that um, could actually be faster than this. It is something, I, I saw one, uh, one crazy graph. I'll leave a link to this article down below. It's actually really good talking about the 5.7, but it showed that a nine millimeter, right? And I think they, they were using PCCs. They weren't using pistols, so they were using the, 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 the PS90 and then a, a nine millimeter uh, pistol caliber carbine. But regardless, the nine millimeter dropped like 30 inches at 200 yards with a 50 yard zero. The 5.7 dropped like two and a half inches. That is pretty crazy. The problem is when we're talking about self-defense, how many people are gonna be shooting at 200 yards? Not many, okay? So it, it does have an, a, a very flat shooting trajectory it's got a higher FPS compared to some of the standard nine millimeter rounds at least. And it is a gun that a lot of people can shoot really well because it's just easy to shoot. The Ruger 5.7, the Ruger 57, it was the same way. It was really easy to shoot. And it's kind of cool to see all these companies embracing 5.7. It almost makes you think that there will be some kind of comeback or resurgence with this round, but guys, it's been like 35 years, <laughs> you know, since this round initially came out, okay? Nine millimeter has been out since like 1902. And so this leads me into some of my cons where we compare and contrast 5.7 to nine millimeter. First off is the cost, you know? You're looking at what, 80, 90 cent per round, a dollar per round sometimes. Uh, the FN ammo with the, with the blue tip, right, is 50 bucks for 50 rounds. 50 rounds of nine, you know, not the same FPS by any means, but I can still get 50 rounds of nine millimeter, 13 bucks a box, 15 bucks a box. I could buy hollow points for like 20, 25 bucks a box. Um, you know, it's just, the ammo is crazy expensive for this. And so there are some other companies actually, you know, making this stuff which is good, but I think you would have to see, you know, every company come out with a 5.7 and multiple companies start making 5.7. They would have to justify taking production away from 9mm, 223, 308 in order to make 5.7, okay? 
that's one obstacle that this will have to hurdle. The same could be said for 30 Super Carry, but let's be honest, 30 Super Carry hasn't been out nearly as long as 5.7. I, I think we need to give the, the 30 Super Carry a little bit more time before we just totally throw it away and say, ah, it's no good, it's never going to be anything uh, compared to 9mm. It may not. 9mm is hard to compete with, and that's another reason that 5.7 will never overtake it, is because of all of the R&D that's been put into not only the guns, but the round itself. You know, you have steel case, aluminum case, brass casing. You have a multitude of different loads that can get you, you know, well over 2,000 feet per second if you want that. Uh, you have hollow points with amazing expansion, you know, even designed for these smaller guns. That's another thing. All of these five, seven guns for concealed carry purposes or, you know, just, just carrying, they're all larger. So although it is a fairly light frame, we just saw, you know, it's like three ounces heavier than this one and it gives you more rounds, but I can carry a smaller gun that's more comfortable and still have 13 plus one in the pipe of nine millimeter expanding hollow points at that. Now, will the energy loss in the 5.7 make up for the expansion in a good hollow point? I don't know if it would. I mean, I've, I've seen in that same article, there's about the 66% energy loss from here to here. Now, if you have good shot placement and you obviously have plenty of rounds, well, I don't think that it is absurd to think can be a good self-defense round, but you have way more options in nine millimeter. But look, it has the advantage, what is it, 125 years now or something like that, compared to, you know, 35 years or something. So, you know, there's a lot of catching up to do. And so we've seen rounds, some of which have been successful, like 40 in the past, kind of overtake nine millimeter as the primary round for police and even uh, civilians, you know, seem to, to kind of follow that sometimes. But now we're seeing a resurgence and we have for some time in nine millimeter because of the advancements and the R&D that's been put into the nine millimeter round. Pistols and PCCs, which use the same magazine. So you have some compatibility there. Now, this one I don't think is as important as what we talked about, but for a guy that let's say has, you know, his PC9 uh, carbine with all of his Glock mags, he has his pistols, you know, which are all Glocks, and now you're asking that same guy <laughs> to not only switch his round, but then he's going to take away his whole system here. He could buy a PS90, but even then they're not going to take the same mags. You know, so there's so many advantages here that you don't get here. And let's be honest, man, although this is a soft shooting gun, and when it comes to the examples of 5.7 that I've shot, which is kind of limited, but still, I've shot the Ruger 57, the M&P 5.7 now, the Diamondback 5.7 pistol that we did a few years ago. It is a cool round. It's a fun round. And this one, as far as a pistol is so freaking soft shooting, nice set of sights on it. Everything I love about M&P is wrapped up into the 5.7 round. There's no way after this much time is it going to overtake nine millimeter. I just don't see enough companies taking the leap and saying 5.7 is the way of the future and we're gonna take production away from our nine millimeter, our best selling round to make 5.7. I just don't see that happening. It would take too many companies, too many AMO manufacturers to jump on board, really drive down costs, consumers actually buying them in order for all of that stuff to happen. And I just don't see it. This thing has its place, like I said, as a training tool, an expensive training tool, but a training tool, a good training tool nonetheless. The M&P 5.7 overall, if I had to grade this thing, if we're just doing a regular review on it for a 5.7 pistol, this thing is like a nine out of 10. Threaded barrel, freaking slide serrations, the sights are amazing. Because of the shape of the cartridge, you have this wide yet slim grip. So 
in my opinion, even with my smaller hands reaching the, the trigger because of the way they've set it, they've set it far back enough to where even if you have smaller hands, you can reach the trigger with this wider grip. So they've done a really nice job and this is a fantastic shooting gun. There's just too many obstacles for this to overtake nine millimeter as a good self-defense round. So if you're gonna buy a 5.7, I say keep the expectations to maybe a, a great self-defense shooter for you. But also remember, you're gonna be spending a heck of a lot more money training with this than you will a good nine millimeter. And you're gonna have a bigger gun to contend with if you're talking about concealed carry. Those are the pros and cons as I see them, man. I'd love for y'all to jump in the conversation. If this is something that you enjoy, consider subscribing to the channel. Drop me a like. If you want to further support what I do, you can do that on Patreon for as little as a dollar or join this channel right here. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down. misses that penis target is just swinging away <laughs> let's get the uh competitor and try that one